Trout of Turin is a witness who knows details of a crime scene that only someone who was at the crime scene could possibly know. The Shroud also corrects the false information released to the public about the crucifixion and death of Jesus through artwork and paintings which depict Jesus with nails going through the palms, a neat circlet of thorns, and also falsely depict the scourge wounds of Jesus as being very minimal and sometimes portrayed as having virtually no wounds at all. When a crime scene is staged slash fake, you give people what they expect to see, not what they don't expect to see. You give them the same story told through the paintings and artwork so people will accept it as authentic. The shroud deviates significantly from all other images of Jesus and is what it's not what we expect to see. When a witness can correct the false information released to the public about a crime scene and also knows details about the crime scene that only someone at the crime scene could possibly know this is a way we can be certain of something beyond a reasonable doubt and know that we have a credible witness. The Shroud is such a witness. For example, the Shroud tells us the hair of Jesus was put in a ponytail. Where in the Bible does it say that? It doesn't. This is one of many details about the crime scene the Shroud knows. This is also an example of a detail law enforcement would not release to the public. The hair of the victim was in a ponytail. If during questioning a witness or a suspect revealed a detail such as this, they would know their testimony was what? Credible. The Shroud is such a witness. The Shroud of Turin gives testimony to the truth in the form of forensic evidence. An impartial witness who expands upon the gospel accounts and gives us a more detailed account of the events of the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. A deceptive witness offers a vague and blurry account of events, not a detailed account like the Shroud does. The Shroud tells us the fine linen Joseph of Arimathea purchased was a Syrian weave cloth. Three over one herringbone twill, eight by two cubits, a first century measuring system, the grave clothes of Jesus, as John called them. Another critically important and always overlooked match point to scripture on the shroud is that the heel of Jesus was struck. Just like it said it would be in the beginning of the Bible, Genesis. Look at the obvious blood flow coming from the wound. Genesis 3.15, and you shall strike his heel. The Shroud also tells us which heel would be struck, the right heel. The Bible doesn't say. Who is the man in the Shroud? There's only one answer to that question. There's not more than one truth here. The Shroud of Turn was not a community burial shroud they used to wrap dozens of different people. Only one person was wrapped in it. God would not make it complicated to identify his son doesn't take a rocket scientist or an Albert Einstein or a Sherlock Holmes to figure out who the man in the shroud is. It's basically a two plus blank equals four mystery to solve. God made it simple. Look at the sequence of events. The unique wounds in specific places. Scourged and crucified. Right side pierced. The cap of thorns, the puncture wounds around the head. Part of the beard is plucked out. Cheeks are bruised. The back has been plowed on. The body was laid in a long sheet of linen. And the body was removed from the linen before decomposition set in. And as a result of removing the body from this linen, there's some type of interaction between the cloth and the body, leaving behind what? A photonegative x-ray holographic image. With the resolution of that of a modern day laser printer. Jesus practically autographed the shroud and wrote his name on it, inked with his own blood, and mixed it with myrrh and aloes. Myrrh and aloes were found in the blood by antibody antigen testing. We can assure everyone that is not another incredible coincidence and not related to the Gospel of John that tells us Nicodemus purchased myrrh and aloes for Jesus and was used in the burial. We could go through every autopsy report ever filed in the history of the earth and never find 
another person with the same combination of all these unique wounds in these unique places on the same person. The combination of all the unique wounds in specific places on the shroud are the mathematical equivalent of a very unique fingerprint of evidence that can only be one person. There are no duplicates of fingerprints in the world population, not even in identical twins. Leaving behind a fingerprint at a crime scene is better than leaving your DNA. There is no chance that fingerprint can be someone else, a 0% chance. And there's a 12 foot long fingerprint on the shroud. We all know who that fingerprint belongs to without me having to say it. The truth is written inside each one of us. God wrote it into our DNA. The challenge is how brutally honest with ourselves can we be? The man in the shroud challenges us to be honest with ourselves, to look inward instead of outward. Those are where the real treasures are found and where the questions we seek to be answered can be found and also where the real problems are that need to be fixed. The Shroud tells us the brutally shocking and horrifying sacrifice Jesus went through. And also, most importantly, it tells us the profound depth of love Jesus had for others with unmistakable clarity. Jesus led by example with outward actions, not just empty words. Jesus offers us a genuine rose that is everlasting. The world offers us a paper rose. The Shroud of Turn is the most powerful witness in the world who tells the most powerful truth. May that truth set you free forever, 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 forever. forever.